The Spurs just extended fourth year wing Devin Vassell to a five year $146 million contract. In this video, I want to go over why Devin is going to be a vital piece to San Antonio's young core, while also having the potential to be one of the NBA's next great wing scores. So with Vassell's game, the first thing I want to go over is his mid-range scoring, because in the modern NBA, it is pretty rare to have a young player who's already really comfortable generating looks from these spots. Now at 6'5", Devin isn't always the biggest wing on the floor, but he does have a 6'10 wingspan, and most importantly, a high release point on his jumper, which is the foundation for pretty much every great in-between score. Now because Vassell gets so much elevation into his jumper, he doesn't need to create a crazy amount of separation to get his shot off. Just simply being able to use his length to rise up and over contests. On this play, you'll see Devin come off this handoff and notice how the defense is both able to get back in front of them and sit on his step back. From this spot, most players would be dead. But watch how Vassell pivots his left foot across his frame, which creates a window back towards his left to turn into. Then he rises up and over the defense for a tough jumper. Now here, watch Devin get to an overcross towards his right. Then he jumps through the help side with his hop step. Again, from this spot, most players would be a non-scoring threat. But Vassell can use his lift and high release point as a get out of jail free card. Now on top of his physical tools, Vassell also has really good pace and navigation with the ball. In pick and roll, he's really good at finding the open space on the floor and snaking his way to spots to rise up. You'll see Devin here working off the screen, and notice how this big is sitting deep and drop, while his man is also trying to fight over the screen. From this spot, all the open space is going to be on the left side of the floor. So Vassell just simply snakes the ball into that open space and rises up for the jumper. Now on this play, Devin's going to play out of a ball screen on the wing, and notice how the screener is going to flip this pick, so Vassell is not going to come off towards his left. And from here, look how the ball side corner is empty, while Looney is also heavily playing on Devin's right side. So instead of snaking the ball back to the middle, Vassell is now going to push the ball out towards his left, to attack and rise up into that open space. Now Devin's combination of getting a ton of lift into his shot, while also having a good feel of the court, is already enough to make him a high level mid-range scorer. But another really important element to Vassell's in-between game is his ability to create separation. So off the dribble, I wouldn't say Devin has super elite or dynamic handles, but he does have a variety of punchy stepbacks in his bag. You'll see him here playing against Bam one on one, and watch how Vassell gets to a between cross, then brings the ball back through. And from this spot, notice how Bam's right foot is up, while Devin's right foot is back. And from here, watch how Vassell brings his right foot across, and punches off it for a step back, which in return pushes Bam's right foot back, and gives Devin the space to rise up. Now here, you'll see Vassell work off the screen and snake the ball back across the middle. But notice as he transfers the rock to his right hand, how he also plants off his left foot, which pushes the big's feet back and gives Devin way more space on this pull-up. This is a nice counter off that initial move, where Devin again plants off his left foot to create separation, but notice how the defense steps forward and eats up Devin's space. So now Vassell is going to skip out lateral and attack downhill to then stop his momentum and create separation on this turnaround. Now Vassell's outside scoring also extends out beyond the mid-range. Last year, Devin shot just under 39% from 3, while also having a healthy volume of 7 attempts per game. So similar to his mid-range game, a lot of Devin's 3's come off the dribble, and he's comfortable pulling up going both right and left, while doing it from range. Vassell for 3. Yes! Off the bounce, Devin's great at gliding with the ball, which both gives him time to read the defense, as well as establish a rhythm into his shot. Watch Vassell here get to a cross between, then skip his feet up, and from here he has the momentum to flow into a left-right pull-up. So Devin's ability to punish teams who sag off him and give him too much space, forces his pickup point to be much higher which in return opens up his mid-range game even more. 
on this play. Notice when Norman Powell steps up above the three, how it gives Devin way more space for his in-between game, where he can navigate to the open spots and use his length to rise up. On this play, notice how Andrew Nemhard is extended up well beyond the three. And again, because Vassell is a real threat from deep, Andrew is forced to fight over the screen, which automatically puts him at a disadvantage. And from here, Devin just simply has too much size and skill for Nemhard to deal with. So while Vassell right now is already a really effective mid-range and outside scorer, one big area of improvement is going to be his ability to put pressure on the rim. So last year, about 12% of Devin's total shots were at the basket, which is much lower than your typical NBA player. Now, perimeter shooting is obviously a really important part to basketball, especially in the modern NBA. But even snipers like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard both have a good amount of their overall looks around the basket, and their ability to play downhill and attack the rim in return opens up their outside shooting even more. So in order for Devin to really break through and become an elite level scorer, he's going to have to find ways to put more consistent pressure on the rim. So the biggest thing Devin needs to improve on going into this season is going to be his playmaking. Now I'm not trying to say that Vassell is selfish or an unwilling passer, but I do think he commonly plays with tunnel vision and fails to read the entire court, which gives the off-ball defense a license to help off their man and make the paint way more crowded. Like on this play, you'll see Devin turn the corner off the screen and notice how much he collapses OKC's defense. But instead of making the easy kickout pass, he gets into a difficult contested pull up. Now here, notice how much he pulls Giddy into the paint. And this kickout pass to the wing would either lead to an open three or a scramble for his teammates to attack. But Devin elects to get into another difficult pull up. Now Devin does have the capability to make the right pass but he is a really delayed decision maker. One thing you'll notice is that Vassell calmly doesn't look to pass until after he's picked up his dribble, which both delays the time it takes for him to make his delivery, and it gives the defense way more time to rotate back to the ball. When you watch some of the NBA's best playmakers, they're great at being both scoring and passing threats, being able to instantly snap quick dimes off the dribble, which both opens up their teammates more on the catch, and in return gives them way more space with the ball because the defense knows if they overcommit too much they could easily be punished with that player's passing. Like on this play, notice how these two Celtic defenders are hesitant to fully commit over to Luka because they know he easily has the ability to spray it out to these shooters which in return gives Doncic a clear lane to attack into. Now I'm not saying that Vassell has to be the same caliber of passer that Luka is, but if he can just get better at making quick and simple reads, I think the floor will open up for him much more. Now when Devin does get downhill, he is a pretty good finisher around the basket, being lengthy, having good pop off the floor, while also possessing really good touch. On this play, you'll see him driving along the baseline, and watch how he lifts up with his head pretty much behind the backboard, but Vassell is still able to extend the ball around and spin the ball off the glass for this tough layup. Now here you'll see Devin come up to set the screen, then pop out, and right off the catch he's able to get into the deep paint in just one dribble, and from here he's able to lift up and maneuver himself around the big to get to the other side of the rim. So overall Vassell really depends on his physical tools to find ways to finish around the basket. Again, just simply using his length and athleticism to lift up and find finishing windows in the air. Which obviously can not work for him in spots, but overall it's not very reliable when he's playing in traffic or going up against length. As a driver, Vassell can be a little reckless at times. There's many plays like this where he attacks into a crowded paint, and instead of playing off two feet, or using his strides to set up angles on the floor, he elects to recklessly jump up and force a finish that's not there. On this play, Devin does make a good initial move by attacking hard to his right, then getting to this high pickup back across to his left. But he makes his pickup extended way too far away from the basket, causing him to get into this difficult runner back to his right hand. Going into next season, I would love to see Vassell make more finishes like this, where he puts his inside shoulder into the shot blocker's chest 
and creates a window towards his left to lay the ball up. So right now, I think Devin Vassell is already a really talented scorer, specifically with his ability to create in the mid-range, as well as behind the three. Going into this season, I would love to see him make a big jump with his overall playmaking, which I think could really unlock his scoring even more, and possibly turn him into an all-star caliber player. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments who the kid should break down next. The kid's here.